Uh, Kevin, has it surprised you as, at all as a, an investor, a chief investment officer, about just how quickly the story has shifted from, oh, my goodness gracious, it's the worst inflation in 40-some yeah. years, and now we're all seemingly worried about whether or not the jobs picture is weakening and that disinflation or deflation may be a worry in the coming years? Yeah, if you look over the short term, there's still a great deal of uncertainty about what the Fed will or won't do next. I'm um, in the camp that in all likely they're going to cut by 25 basis points in September and likely revert back to their March dot plot shot, which showed three rate cuts of 25 basis points each this year, another three rate cuts of 25 basis points each in 2025, and yet another three rate cuts of 25 basis points each in 2026. If, in fact, that's the case and we take a longer term view, if rates are lower, if yields are lower, if inflation continues to moderate over the next two years, well, that provides some pretty strong tailwinds for both stocks and bonds for investors to consider. Although it's interesting to contemplate at this point in the cycle, we were talking to Michael Darda last hour, Mike, and he was talking about how the Fed needs to cut by 50. Inflation yeah. expectations are down by 60 basis points uh, since earlier this year. And I heard from some bulls after the segment who said, I don't always agree with him, but I think he's right yeah. this time. But there's no way the Fed is cutting half uh, a point. I don't know if there's no way they go 50. I think that probably shouldn't be your assumption. I think the market, as of yesterday, was pricing in um, a 35 basis point decline in September. So it was splitting the difference between a 25 and a 50. I guess I could understand the argument for 50 because if there's going to be a 50 at some point in the easing cycle, um, you're starting with more than 525 right, right now. And so, therefore, it's a smaller, you know, proportional uh, decline. And also it's True. a gesture that says, look, we're starting a new process. We're acknowledging that rates up here are restrictive. Inflation's fallen farther than we thought it would at this point. Let's get going. I don't think it necessarily has to be or I, I do think the market wants uh, an understanding that we're going to narrow that gap between where rates are and where inflation is. And you have to have a high sensitivity to whether the economy hangs in there along the way. To me, the bull case for two years now has been inflation will come down faster than the economy will weaken. Mm -hmm. That still remains the case, but we seem like we're kind of uh, have a, a moment of doubt around yes, that. Where they're converging. Maybe. Oh, yes, I mean, exactly. But the doubt is, is kind of key because you have this conversation that's happening in certain parts of the kind of macroeconomic sphere about whether or not Americans would be better off having a slower growth and perhaps even job losing environment as opposed to having a job with wage gains that are more moderated, but having their wages eroded by the effects of higher Lingering. inflation, yep. right? And, and so there's this weird line that you have to straddle. But I wonder, Kevin, if you go 50, mm -hmm. that also kind of signals, that hey, whole that holds, that, that's a, that things are maybe not as good as we thought they were, right? And, yeah. and that could send all kinds of reverberations to the market. Yeah, I believe the Fed is more concerned at this point with the pace of this economic slowdown potentially, and I underline potentially, turning into recession than they are with inflation staying above 2%. Look at their last summary of economic projections. They forecast core PCE to not return to their 2% target until the end of 2026. Yet they're still forecasting 225 basis points in cuts between now and the end of 2026. So if they're so determined to get inflation back to their 2% target, why would they be cutting interest rates by that much prior to getting back to their 2% target? I believe unemployment hitting 4.3% after that last jobs report, keeping in mind that their year-end forecast was only 4%, concern them.